I made one proclamation. Nick Sirianni, get out of the way and stay out of the way this year. Let's ask Angelo Cataldi, our good friend, get him in here. I couldn't wait to get him on here, man, because I'll tell you what, Angelo. Boy, I'll tell you, man, I saw some of those fans rolling out of Lincoln Financial, and you have been right dead on with this guy here. Nick Sirianni is the reason that this football team may not win a Super Bowl or even get to a Super Bowl because they have not rectified one problem. That's that guy. That is the worst coach since Rich Kotai. I can't believe how egregious that guy was. Have you ever seen anything like what you saw on Sunday? No, but I was not the least bit shocked. All right. I try when I'm watching the game now, Dan, I try to picture what it's like from the people above Sirianni because they picked this knucklehead and they must know. What I saw yesterday, this is what I saw in the Eagles game. I saw more amazing athletic plays by the Philadelphia Eagles in that game than I've ever seen in any game. And I've been here 40 years. I've never seen a better, more athletic game. From the Devontae Smith catch in the back of the end zone with one hand to the, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the new kid, the kid they just got from uh, Washington. Uh, that amazing 36 shot play, right? Um, unbelievable play. The, the ceiling of the great play by Dean and the interception in the end zone, that there was like five or six hurts running for the touchdown. Nobody getting near him. Athleticism everywhere, brought to the roster by Howie Roseman. And then he put in charge of the roster a guy who has no idea what he's doing. He may as well wear a clown outfit. He might as well wear a clown outfit. All these stupid gestures and dumps up. Two point conversions, right? Fourth and one or two. Did he get one right the whole freaking day? No. That's the only reason it was a game. He kept, you were 100% right. He kept Doug Peterson at the game. Now, I'm not letting Peterson off the hook either, though, because they had the ball with a minute 42 on the, on the Eagles' 13 yard line, right? There's one play I'm not calling. And he calls a play. <laughs> He's calling a touchdown, a pass into the end zone. So I'm going to give Hurts 90, 100 seconds to try to come back and win the game with a field goal. That was a ridiculous play call. So again, Sirianni at six and two walks out again because the athleticism of his players and his dumb mistakes get hidden by the fact they won a game. But if you're watching the game and you know anything about football, the guy is awful. And is that is the only thing left for him to do is to make those decisions. And he keeps getting them wrong. Keeps getting them wrong. How much more do we need to see? How we about this? Blow another season in the playoffs? How about this, Angelo? He said if he were today at the press conference, he said that if he had to do it all over again, he wouldn't do it again. And I say this. Well, that's going to be your undoing. Is that this guy's – now, now, Angelo, help me out a... here. Is that the front office, though, with their yeah. analytics doing this? Or is that Nick trying to elbow his way in – to having a type of job because we all know. I mean, Kellen did it. Think about what you said. Kellen did his job by putting the team in position to put points on the board. Here you got a guy parachuting in, undermining that and taking the points away. The coordinator on the other side is making the defense better. The one guy who's getting in the way here is, is this really just Nick doing this? Or do you think he's wow. being coached by the upper management? that they want to always be aggressive. I don't mind being aggressive, but I mind being reckless. Here's the thing, Dan, all right? Yes, he has analytics guidance that he's used. But yesterday, for example, the analytics guidance was based on the fact that nobody's been able to stop the tush push. Doug Peterson figured out how to do it. Two, two tiers. Bottom tier cuts out the, the, the Eagles line. Second tier smushes him back when he come, when when Hertz comes over the line. That was the plan, and it worked better than anybody else and what they've done. When you see that they have figured that out, by the second time you've seen it, you don't do it anymore. <laughs> so uh, th there was a penalty on an extra point. So now you only got a yard to do. Don't just robotically say, 
Well, then we'll just do the tush push when you already know it isn't working anymore. So see, even if you've got the analytics chart, sometimes you've got to think in the moment yes. based on what you're seeing. That is what a coach's job is. And he just kept getting it wrong over and over and over again. I'll tell you what, Dan, I, this is horrible to say at the city of Philadelphia, which loves the Eagles. Part of me wanted them to lose the game at the end. Just so today, in the midst of all the other campaigning going on, there'd be a campaign started to get rid of this guy. Because they're not – yes, they can beat the Jaguars. The Jaguars are a lousy team. Right? They're not going to beat a good team in a big game with that guy on the sideline. Because it's in the, you cannot completely – Totally insulate your team from the stupidity of a man who doesn't know how to do his job. And yesterday was exhibited at that this guy has no idea what the hell he's doing. None. The play of Jalen Hurts, Kellen Moore, yes. Vic Fangio, as we said. Yeah. You know, explain to me how this game was close. Angelo, there's only one explanation. It's the coach on the sidelines because right. everything they did in this game. Now, when you mentioned the word analytics, I had an argument with John McMullen about this, our beat writer for us. And I said, and he says, well, the analytics say this. And I'm like, well, here's the problem that the Eagles have. I believe like, I believe in like what great coaches do applied analytics. What you just said. Yes. And you can't build a game plan off the analytics guys. And what Julian tells you. Nope. You've got to be able to have it when it matters in game, and you've got to have a feel for the game. Right. I think this guy just doesn't have a feel for the game and a feel for the moment, and that's why it looks cookie cutter. Yes, you're right. But you tell John that the analytics are fine to a point. They are a guiding. that they, they can help you decide what you're going to do in a moment. But ultimately, it's got to also be based on what happened that day because one team – is going to play you differently than another, and you as a coach have to adjust to what's going on. And Sirianni has never shown any ability to do any of that. He's like a robot. He's programmed based on the analytics that is run in by the Eagles by the owner's son, Julian Lurie. So maybe he doesn't want to get up, the owner upset by going against the owner's son. The last four games have a combined record of 9-22. and 22. Is it fool's gold? Or are you seeing, again, and now they're going to get a break. Dak's not going to be on the field this coming weekend for the right. Cowboys. So you're going to get Cooper Rush in the building there. Then you right. get Washington and Baltimore and a couple more good teams on the flip side of that. But we're seeing them, and people are getting excited again because it is four in a row. Hertz hasn't turned the ball over. He looks a little bit like 22 again. But I'm try my, my take is, is that, you know, you're, you're playing the Browns. You're playing the Jags. You're playing the crummy Giants. The Bengals aren't totally crappy. They are in defense. But, Angelo, are, are we in a position like we were a year ago where the team was 10-2, and 10-1, and one, and people are going like, this is a Super Bowl team. And then you look at it and you're like, you've only beaten one winning team this year. Now, like you said last week, oh, hey, man, maybe you found more of a cynic than you. But, I mean, I'm trying to look at this and go like this. I mean, how do you look yeah, at what the last four goal. weeks have been? It's fool's goal. It's fool's gold, but uh, something has happened that's going to kind of detract from that. That They should not have a – the Cowboys with Dak are awful this year. They stink, all right? They're bad. Washington is suddenly – they're leading the division, and uh, Jaden Daniels looks phenomenal. I, I, I love him. I think he's an amazing yep. player. Yes. That's your test because you're going to be dealing with a guy – with the same kind of athletic talent that the Eagles have, Hurts, if not even more so, you're going to be dealing with Dan Quinn and a very, very good coaching staff. And their defense, their whole team, just they've got that feel like this is good. We're going to make a big step forward this year. And they're in the process of doing it. If the Eagles can take on Washington and win, and win in a way that is impressive, then I'm I'm ready to say to you, you know what I, I was already way off on the five win, but um, 
yeah, maybe they're they really got a chance to do something here. But huh. I, it's inconceivable to me with Sirianni there. The talent, you know, there's been either the talent is Super Bowl worthy. Look at it. Look at Barkley, the runs. <laughs> it was insane what he was doing. It was brilliant. They now have linebackers who have an impact on the game. Dean and Bourne are playing very good football. They're doing it. Carter in the middle yesterday was terrific at stopping the run. He did a great job. They've got a ton of talent. And I got to, I just, I keep going back to it. Harry Roseman's watching that and going, how much more can I bring in? What, am I, what else I got to do here? And this guy's finding ways to practically blow the game. And it's like, well, practically, they want it. He's six and two. Sirianni's got the good record again this year. 40 and 19 also. He stinks. I know. Yeah, he stinks. I don't give a damn. You said he's he's comparable to Rich Kotite. No, Kotite <laughs> was better. This guy's <laughs> awful. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. They win despite him. Despite him. What he did yesterday, my God. He doesn't call the plays. He doesn't have anything to do with the defense. He doesn't do anything to do with the separate special teams. The only thing he does is decide field goals and, and two-boy conversion. He couldn't have screwed it up more. Couldn't have. How is Jeffrey Laurie looking at this? <laughs> I don't, you know, that. Is it Does he look at it as a positive that they're 6-2 and two and no. overlooks the no, other stuff can't. because he's a, he's a lap guy and – He's a puppet, and it's kind of the same kind of guy that they want in there because he's a yes man. Or do they really? I mean, if Doug Peterson was being questioned for a win against Green Bay on a Monday, do they question the decisions that were made Sunday by Nick, or wow. are they are they more in line with the kind of coach Nick is for what they're looking for? How do you think they look at this? I, I think now a, a day like yesterday definitely moves moves things and it huh. changes minds because you see when the game is going on they're experiencing it the way we are they're watching the game they're scratching their head they're going by the third time he tries these stupid two-point conversions when they were up they would have been up 17 yeah. if they got a, a field goal and they went out on the field to try to convert a fourth and three all right that's just stupid. You understand? There's not, and, and even the announcers who never challenge anything coaches do, the announcers are going, wouldn't you want to be up more than two scores? Hey, you got a field goal kicker. He mm -hmm. hit that with his eyes closed. Why are you not taking the three points and going up more than two scores? Yeah, they're experiencing that the way we are. And, and Lurie now has got to be saying to himself, listen, come on. It's one thing to look at 40 and 19, and it's another thing to look at the games as they happen. And uh, I I know one thing, all right? I know the volume of email I get, and I know what the fans are saying to that. And, and in the words of um, the Sopranos and Tony Soprano, <laughs> Nick Sirianni is dead to them, all right? He's, wow! He's dead to them. Do you understand? Yeah. They don't even want to see him next week. And he's six and two because the guy clearly is clueless. Ah, I mean, next level clueless. A whole nother level of stupidity was added yesterday. D'Angelo, help me on that. You're 40 and 19, you're six and two, and the fan base hates you. Hates How's that possible? Oh, it's simple. All right. A, his sideline demeanor, which is embarrassing, it was again yesterday. Because we know he's not doing anything. He's okay. out there playing for the cameras. I don't know what the hell he's doing down there. He Every time he opens his mouth at a news conference, he makes an ass of himself, right? That yeah. doesn't work. He's rolling the kids out after games, which doesn't play well in this city at all. And frankly, the more you hear him talk and the more you see him coach, the clearer it is that he's clueless. They're not dumb in this city. They see his incompetence. And here they are at six and two. And if you saw my email today, I'm talking hundreds. He's dead to them. Wow. They don't want him here. They don't want him one more week. Wow. That is an indictment for sure on the head coach. 
of the Philadelphia Eagles. I was wondering, Angelo, who had a worse weekend, James Franklin or Sirianni? I was just, I, I mean, both those guys there, man. I mean, one guy going after people in the stands right. too, and I'm like, both these guys, man. I mean, right. I have the answer to that question. The answer is Joel Embiid. All right, that's the answer to the question. Because that guy, I just wrote for my website. I wrote about the game, and I wrote about uh, what Embiid did to Marcus Hayes, who I know has been on your show. And um, it's a disgrace. What happened there is is an utter disgrace. And and I blame Embiid because he's a baby. The Sixers, because they are an embarrassment in terms of our city and how you conduct yourself at the PR level. An embarrassment. And I, I, I blame everybody associated. I blame the whole Philadelphia media that has reached the point in its softness now where a star player can hold a news conference on Friday and say, I've done so much for this city. How dare you write what Marcus Hayes wrote? Now Hayes pushed the he pushed it a little by bringing in his his legacy and the effect that it would have on his son and his um his late brother. He pushed that. I'll acknowledge that, but not to the extent that no. Embiid reacted the way he did. And then, according to the Enquirer, it was more than just a shove. He struck him. He hit him. He hit him in the neck, and then put, shoved him in the collarbone. And uh, first of all, I assume. <laughs> Oh, maybe they should suspend him. Don't you have to play a freaking game before they suspend you? All right. The you guy, the guy had that attitude at that news conference stand because he's been coddled. His ass has been kicked, kissed for 10 freaking years in this town. 10 years they've kissed his ass. And and now if somebody comes out and says something that's obviously true that the guy is soft that the guy is not in condition that the guy plays sometimes when it suits his situation it's not acceptable i relate to things like this the way a fan would i want to go to the first game of the sixer season and i want to take my little kid and i want that kid to wear his joel and b jersey because he loves joel and b he's a big star player and we go to the game and he's sitting on his ass in street clothes because of left knee management. That isn't even a friggin' injury. What is left knee management? Look it up on WebMD. It doesn't say anything. We don't even know if he's hurt. He had the news coverage. We still don't know if he's hurt. That guy is an outrage, Dan. And what they did to Marcus Hayes, I texted him. I said, Marcus. God bless you. You're the last guy in Philadelphia media who's got the balls to stand up to the star players and the teams in this city. And Dan, there's one other thing I need to say about it, because this is a new law. This is new. The Philadelphia 76ers, after their star player accosted a top columnist, top one has been here 30 years. Marcus is a top columnist in this town, a real journalist, Syracuse University. When he gets accosted and the PR people in that locker room turn to all the media and ask them to not report a word about it, to Don't suppress say. the story, the Don't fact say that. That, you would, that you would suggest that oh my God. tells me that these media people have been compliant to your wishes in a way that is completely against the basic standards of journalism. You understand? If I were covering a team, how about decency? Somebody said that to me, I would look at them and say, No, you don't understand. The game is not a story anymore. This is a story. I got the top sports star in this city physically going after a columnist in this town, and you think I'm not going to write about it? the hell is wrong with you? That's the definition of news. Wow. And the fact that they even tried it, Dan, was an indictment on all those lemmings who cover that team and never have a negative word to say about anything. 
Wow. They haven't won a championship in 41 years, and you've still got nothing critical to say about it. Shame on all of you. Shame on you. And bravo to Marcus Hayes, the one guy left with some intestinal fortitude in Philadelphia sports media. Why didn't oh. WIP or the Fanatic, why haven't they reported that end of it? Because, again, this kind of goes down the line of Howard Eskin and how they covered up for that BS with the Phillies and such. Has it become now that these teams have so much power in Philadelphia, Angelo, that they really dictate comment content know. and they really dictate on how reporters are going to be covering people? Because, again, you should see the things that people are saying about Nick. All the beat writers are defending Nick because, you know, they need a key fob to get in Novacare. It just seems to me – I mean, seriously, if you look – it's much easier to walk into the locker room when you've said that the coach is brilliant or he did the right thing. or That's not your job. You're not part of the PR department. You're reporting the team. You're offering your views, and they should in some way reflect those of the paying customers because those are the people reading it. Those are the people that want to see that what they're thinking is in step with what some of the people who supposedly sports experts feel. It's just, it's sickening to me beyond anything I could tell you, Dan. It upsets me. I can't tell you what happened with WIP. Here's what I have heard through the through my emails. Uh, Marcus Hayes did seek an opportunity to go on WIP yesterday at Sunny Hill show and was told no. Now, Sonny Hill is a, a uh, mouthpiece for the players. He's been his whole life. And I get that. Yeah. Come on, the guy's in his 80s. He's an icon of the time. Whether or not they've done anything with it, I personally text Rhea Hughes, who is my connection with WIP now, and said, if I were still there, my guest at 7 a.m. today, after the Eagles game, would be Marcus Hayes. Because I would want to hear his story live. To me, that is better radio than anything that would be shown about the game, even though the game became very interesting at the end. And she said, well, I would suggest it, but I'm not sure they will go in that direction. I'm going to put she them didn't on. She say they wouldn't do it. She just said she didn't think. I'm, I'm going to put Mark that. on. That's a bigger, it's a bigger story. It's a bigger story. Dan, it's a bigger story. Do you think that they're suppressing? You, so you think all the media outlets right now are suppressing this story? I don't know if they are. I think their instinct now is to feel, suppress any negative story. Do you feel they are? Story. Do you feel they are? Yes. I feel that they are looking at it through the eyes of the team because it makes their job easier because they're pussies. All right. I'll say it with the word. They're a bunch of pussies with the exception of Marcus Hayes. There are others who sometimes go, you know, Mike Sielski's pretty good. He, yeah. he gets over there some of the time. Marcus Hayes goes there all the time. He's doing it the way Stan Hockman would have done it many years ago, the way Ray Diddinger would have done yeah. it. Yep. The way the people, the forefathers of sports media in Philadelphia, the way I would have done it. Yep. All right. But uh, nowadays, it's just not happening anymore. And it's a, it's a disgrace because the fans aren't being represented. The, fe it, the feelings it, of the fans are not being represented. How about this, Angelo? It just seems that these teams have gained so much control over, they have. over they have. the um, outlets now that there's very they few have. places like here. I mean, I'm going to text Marcus right. when I'm done with you, and I'm going to tell him I'd love to have him on because at the end of the day, man, that organization, if you're trying to build a community arena down in Chinatown and you need the community support, is that your number one objective right now is to make sure that there's not any kind of negative waves that you want to be looked at in a good light? Yeah, that you it's have managing your star the message. You've dealt with you've it got with the your Eagles. star player attacking a, a – a columnist like Marcus Hayes, I mean, I get you want everything to be good, but Angelo, Jesus, criminy, man, this goes against everything that you and I, why we got in this. Oh, man, I hope we can get him back here. Uh, maybe that the, the Sixers cut us off here because it just doesn't really make sense here, man. I mean, so let me get this right. The Philadelphia 76ers, according to Angelo Cataldi, went to the media people in the building there. Let, let, let's finish up here with Angelo okay. here. Angelo, last so comment. Just that. to finish the thought there, you, you've dealt with it yourself. The Eagles try to manage the message through you. Yep. 
Uh, clearly, the Sixers do it. They try to suppress a major story uh, about one of their their biggest star uh, going after a media person. Um, I'm sure. I don't know if I, I assume the Phillies are doing it. I don't know that that Howard Eskett story kind of got buried pretty quickly. I I don't know, Dan. I don't know. All I know is this: it's not the way it was done. I still prefer the other way. I prefer the way where you cover a team as an objective source willing to provide negative insights and reporting when needed. And uh, I don't see hardly any of that anymore. I see very little of that anymore. And it's wow. just, it's not the town it used to be. And uh, it's, I feel no terrible way. about that. No way. It's te- that's That news there by you is terrible. I mean, it absolutely is. And no wonder that the Eagles can get away with Sirianni now with the assault of Marcus Hayes, because I said the same thing. I mean, I don't give a shit what a guy writes. You make $55 million a year. I'm going to walk through that like a box of rocks. I'm not going to care about what a guy writes about me. I'm, I'm, I am I'm make $55 million, and you're telling me that some column bugs you? Dude, I mean, he said, you're in the wrong you know, city. You, I've done so much for this city. Oh God! He's getting fifty. I had fifty-one million. He's getting fifty plus million dollars a year, and he hasn't played a friggin' game. And he's playing victim. He's playing victim, making fifty million dollars a year. There, <laughs> victim. <laughs> we, we're all friggin' victims. Oh my God! Oh, you're so unfair to me. Where's my money? Yeah, my 50 million. <laughs> hey, Angelo, did my, direct, Angelo, did my direct deposit come in? Thank you. I'm so abused. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This, is, this only happens when you've been trained to be that coddle, when you're so coddled that you could say any anything you want to say, and, and they'll report it, and if it's negative, they'll give you the benefit of every doubt. It's awful. It's aw- it's. I may move. I'm thinking of moving. <laughs> hey, this is no longer Philly. It's Cherry Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I may move down to Florida, Danny. That's what I'm doing. Where all the old people go. <laughs> That's Naples. That's that side of the island over there. Hey, okay. Angelo, I'm thank you so Naples. much, man. That was spectacular. I appreciate it. All Anytime, your time. And thank you, my friend. Anytime, Dan. You bet. That's our good friend, Angelo Cataldi. Let me take a quick time out. I'll tell you what I think of tonight, and we'll follow up on that. Hit the like button. Keep it here at National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.